News First News Line with Faraz Shaukatali. Hello, good morning. This is News Line, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo and broadcasting on TV One, live on Facebook and a little bit later on on YouTube. And this morning our guest is Mr. Sarat Jayaman, who is President's Counsel and is the Director General of the Commission to Investigate Allegations of Bribery or Corruption in Sri Lanka, better known as the Bribery Commission. Very good morning to you. Mr. Very Jayaman. good morning to you. And thank you very much for being on News it's Line. My, it's my pleasure. Now that Mr. Jayaman, I can start off straight away with this thing. I, I notice, of course, that you've become very um, um, public friendly in the sense that we see you uh, more often on uh, television and the media and so on, which is all, all very good. Um, but perhaps you might tell me, this bribery commission, it's, um, you must be having a really busy time. Definitely. Corruption Definitely. apparently is endemic. Yes. And it's happening all over the place. Yes. So how equipped, how well equipped is your commission? How many staff have you got? Uh, in 1994, yeah. Uh, there was a bribery commissioner's department. Right. So therefore, it was the officers of the bribery commission department yeah. who used to conduct investigations right. and send a dossier of investigations to the attorney general. Hmm. Then it was the attorney general who was empowered to take decision right. whether to file a case or not. Right. If he decides to file a case, uh, he would send his officers to court to prosecute. Right. In 1994, with the change of the government, yeah. the the structure and the scheme of the bribery commission department was changed. Right. Uh, an independent bribery commission was set up. Right. Earlier, the bribery commission department came under the purview of the Ministry of Justice. Right. After 1994, uh, three commissioners were appointed to the commission. Right. And under the Commission Act, two have to be judges retired judges from either Supreme Court or Court of Appeal. Right. The third person has to be a person who has wealth of experience in investigation. Right. Now after this 19th amendment, those, uh, those commissioners uh, can be appointed by the President on the recommendation or on the approval of the President uh, on the Constitutional Council. Right. In 1994, uh, when the commission was suddenly set up, yeah. they didn't have any uh, civilian investigators. Right. So they had to borrow uh, some police officers from the police department right. and that number now has gone up to 200 okay and in 19 so 200 police officers, police officers. Okay. and 1994 when the commission was suddenly set up they didn't have a very experienced legal officers right. whereas attorney general's department very uh, successful institution in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. uh, all the young uh, budding lawyers they are, they are always go to that in this department while right. they have a better future prospects. Right. But when suddenly this commission was set up, uh, the commission had to fight hard to recruit talented officers. Right. That was a huge challenge. Now that number has now gone up to 29. So you have 29 legal people. Yes. Now I would like to compare this. Hmm. In Hong Kong, they have only uh, 6 million people. Yeah. But they have 1,000 investigators. 1,000? 1, 1,000 investigators. With 6 million people. Yeah. And 220 in the prevention unit, yeah. 70 officers in the education unit. Are you telling me that we need 3,000? No, I'm not saying 3,000, but you would appreciate yeah. 200. The scale is, of the problem. 200 is awfully inadequate. We have taken steps. I'll let you know what yeah. we are going to do. Now, out of these, uh, Investigators, the 29 yes. are the legal people. Legal people. Well, how many of them would have experience and uh, knowledge to, uh, to prosecute people, to detect? Because increasingly, uh, acts of bribery and corruption uh, are, shall we call it, Teflon coated. Yes. It doesn't stick. They, people uh, engage in corruption and uh, in bribery and so on. But they do it and style it so well that it's almost impossible to get hold of them. They slither away. Yes. They slide away. Yes, certainly. They get through these fingers. There's no mesh to catch them. So the, how many of your offices, these legal people, 
can how many of them can do a forensic financial audit of some place? Uh, actually, this investigation is in, entrusted with the police officers. They are the investigators. Right. Now, I must. Uh, First, I must appreciate yeah. for the last 23 years role played by our investigators. Yeah. I think they are, in my view, uh, world class yeah. uh, when it comes to the detection yeah. in raid cases. Mm. Namely, when you uh, accept a bribe, a police officer, I think they can compete with any officer in, in, in any other jurisdiction. They are very well equipped, uh, even two months back when he made the biggest raid ever in the country, mm. uh, one, of, one of the top official mm. ever to have been arrested for the last 60 years. Mm. So they, they have done it, our officers have done master. Right. That is only with regard to the raid. Mm. This is an ambush operation. So they are very good at ambushing. Ambushing. And they are very professional. When you talk like that, I, I remember uh, um, several years younger than I am now, um, Ian Vikramanayaka. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, very proud of yes. uh, uh, Uncle Ian. Yes. Uh, because um, he was a character. Yes. And he was he was the face of the bribery yes. commission. Yes. And I remember uh, him. And I was going to ask you whether behind your jacket you've got a holster with a gun in it. Because Mr. Vikramanayaka did have that. Uh, I don't. Don't secret reasons. I don't want to say. You don't want to say. <laughs> but anyhow, the same gun is available uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, our business. Uh, Aunt Rian, of course, for Mr. Yeah. Vikramanayaka. Uh, I think the same gun is still there. Oh, I see. Same gun is still there. IFP Vikramanayaka. What a man he was. Yes. Um, and of course, uh, very proud to say that he was uh, group director at the Capital Maharaj organization. Okay. And uh, uh, I, th I think he would have. Uh, uh, played his uh, investigative role even here yes. to ensure that everything was hunkadori and tickety boo. Yes. But uh, he was a national figure. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody knew him yes. because he had this persona. Uh, but the situation that prevailed during that era yeah. and present day is different. Because in 1994, uh, yeah. uh, in addition to the bribery, yeah. a new, of, new offense was introduced. Right. That offense is called corruption. Right. Uh, in addition to that, there was another offense, uh, offense called unexplainable wealth. Right. In colloquial terms, we say asset cases. Right. That means uh, if if a public servant is yes. not co is is he, he cannot be arrested while accepting bribe, yes. then uh, on the strength of the material, you can conduct an asset investigation. Hmm. You evaluate the wealth he has acquired. And, and check whether that is compatible with the non-income. Right. If it is not compatible, you file a case. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you need to have not mere ambush skill. Yeah. You need to have a forensic skill. Yeah. Definitely, you need to know how to look at the documents. You have to have a forensic eye. Yeah. In addition to that... How many of these forensic eyed people do you have? With great respect to our officers. Yeah. We don't have a single graduate, single expert in our organization. So all these things are done by police officers who have learned uh, some skill in this respect. They are very good in raid investigation, but when it comes to asset, we have one or two good officers. Yeah. But when it comes to corruption, you know, when corruption means a public servant, yeah. uh, when taking a decision, yeah that he knows very well by his wrongful decision yeah. there is a loss that would cause the government yeah. or there will be undue advantage to a third party right. or to himself yeah. or there will be undue loss to a third party yeah. and if he can establish that mental element yeah. then that is corruption though it's so, so simple when you need to prove you need to look at the documents. Mm -hmm. You need to have you only the accountants can understand this. For example, yesterday I was at a function. Yeah. There are chartered accountants organized. Yeah. They said very experienced senior accountants told me, yeah. Sarah, though uh, they are expert in chartered accountancy, still they are not forensic. They don't have sometimes forensic eye yeah. to assist investigation. So therefore, it is a very special field. Mm. So therefore, we never had such thing. So in order to be successful, we need, we need auditors, accountants, uh, financial analysts, uh, digital forensic expert, bond expert, uh, security expert, banking expert. Bond so, expert. That's 
That's something that's in the news. If the, 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 okay, okay. Carry so on. we need those. Yeah. So then, yeah, last year I never, I have never gone before the media. Why? Yeah. I I thought of nothing doing in yeah. in recruiting these people. Yeah. Best example is. Yeah. You know, in the anti-corruption ranking, yeah. Hong Kong is placed in number thirteen yeah. in the world ranking, and Hong Kong also under the British rule. Yeah. So I thought of uh, writing to Hong Kong authorities uh, to give us some kind of training. Yeah. They wrote back to me and they asked a simple question because uh, they they told me they are still puzzled how in our uh, bribery commission still the civilian investigators are not there. So then he, they invited me to come to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So I went with one of the commissioners uh, and to ask for their training to our officers. They said, look here, uh, in Hong Kong, they don't have police officers. Mm -hmm. They have engineers, accountants, amazing. That is why they have come number 13 in the world anti-corruption ranking. Where are we? We, yeah. till last year, we were in, 19, uh, in, the, in the rank of 95. Now we have moved four places up, 91, that is... So, how, what's, the, what's the bottom? Bottom is 180. Okay. 180. Maybe it's kind of halfway. Singapore is number 6, hmm. uh, Japan number 20, Bhutan number 26, Malaysia was earlier number 56, last year they came down to number 66, and after last week's thing, I think next year they might go up. Right. <laughs> so, that is how the world perception. So, coming back to our, our experts, yeah. So then uh, we, I came back. So then we started uh, uh, to create posts. You yeah. know, in the government sector, to create a one post generally, it takes more than two to three years. There are several barriers. First, you have to get the approval of the management department, salaries and card commission, public service ministry, public service commission, treasury, etc. So no, no, they are civil servants. They look at bribery commission like any other government department, like a forest department. <laughs> so they always have their red paint, especially in the, the Salaries and Card Commission. They never allow us to recruit anyone. Even if they allow, they don't want our recruits to go up in the, their rankings. So they want our officers to be lower compared to the civil service. Though that, that is the difficulty we have. So with great difficulty... So where do you get your money from? Where is your budget from? We, we get the budget from the Treasury. So if you're investigating somebody in the treasury, you, you won't get your money. No, we, we or can't. you'll have to drop the investigation. No, no, I'll tell you, in other countries, they don't depend on the treasury. There's a particular budget allocation allocated by the parliament. Right. So, of course, we have to be transparent. We, can be, we have to be checked. If yeah. we do any misuse, that's a different matter. Yeah. But for everything, a pleading with the officials in the treasury for simplest thing. Yeah. For, I'll give a simple example. Uh, every government department, our officer is given a 1,500 rupees allocation for telephones. Yeah. Okay, fine. But our, our investigators, my goodness, the amount of calls that they give to the witnesses, other government officers, they can't manage with this amount. When we want more, we have to write letters and letters. So likewise, last, last year I made a request, yeah. went through all these barriers. Yeah. Now ultimately they have approved yeah. 200 to recruit 200 expert investigators. Oh. Now it was gazetted last uh, month. Right. Now we are calling the applications this time. I'm proud to say by this time uh, there are even tuition classes. Uh, some of the cities they have started uh, for those uh, prospective applicants. Right. <laughs> there will be open exam conducted by the Commission of uh, Examination. There will there are, there are be several rounds of uh, uh, interviews. Okay. So for, this is the, his, the we are changing history. So we're changing history. We have a question, and I think it's very valid, so I'm going to ask it. In a recent Supreme Court judgment on, on the energy sector, the Chief Justice uh, said that his conscience and the conscience of the court was disturbed by the nature of the fraud. Uh, and uh, our viewer is asking, what has the law enforcement agencies, civil society activists, and the mass media done to investigate the hint given by the Honorable Chief Justice? I think here the, our viewer is referring to... Uh, the case in the energy sector by the call, okay. the invitation of court, uh, where the, the, the court, the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court of this country said that their conscience had been troubled and disturbed by the actions of uh, the nature of that fraud. But we now find that, you know, I don't want you to, I don't want to get down to put you in an embarrassing situation, discuss a specific case, but we still find 
that that uh, official who's a secretary uh, is still in place in still in position and apparently we don't know whether there's an investigation we as in the public don't know and you using your um, article 17 the secrecy laws will probably not tell me whether this man is being investigated or not until you file a case that's not transparency though why can't we know why can't the people know okay uh, this uh, transparent there's a section in the commission act section 17 yes 17 uh, 17 yeah. Uh, it says we cannot divulge any information yeah. with regard to our information, yeah. investigation. Yeah. Probably with the good intention, yeah. they have, may have included this section yeah. in order to protect the integrity of the investigation. Yeah. The moment you divulge the nature of the investigation, uh, any interested party can uh, destroy any prospective evidence. Yeah. Though they can uh, set up their defenses early. So therefore, when there's advantage in conducting investigation in secret manner. Yeah. But on the other hand, uh, I uh, respect your point yeah. uh, to, to, to gauge the efficiency of any bribery commission. Yeah. In other countries, uh, there are oversight committees. Mm. Uh, now we always uh, res uh, respond, we send our uh, month uh, quarterly reports to parliament. In addition, like Malaysia, Hong Kong, there are oversight committees which comprises of a very respected uh, uh, civil society people. Mm -hmm. They will not go case by case basis, but generally they will oversee how we are performing. You, you said something earlier, uh, uh, DG, that uh, is a little bit troubling. Uh, you mentioned that we need specialists in various fields yes. uh, at, at the Commission, and one of them uh, you mentioned bond. Now, uh, my name, uh, my question is going back to this bond thing because uh, there was a time when there was a complaint made against the for one of the former governors of the uh, central bank uh, and if you all had no exper expertise in in bond matters it it's almost a non-starter that complaint because you wouldn't your department your commission wouldn't have had the necessary expertise to go into that uh, how does that work? Because now we have a, a former governor who is uh, out of the country and, you know, it's all very wishy-washy whether we will ever get him back here and all that. But my point is this, that at the time that they were, they were conducting this investigation, I, th I believe that there was also a move to, um, uh, to place a travel restriction on, on that person. And that was done. But later, it, it's obviously been removed because he's been up and down since and now he's away <laughs> but my question is this what's the point you you had nobody specializing in this bond thing and yet you're looking at an investigation and all of a sudden we find that this man whose travel restriction was placed is now traveling which means that some form of clearance has been given by your commission mm -hmm. now, how do you respond okay I will respond to that question in three separate parts. Yeah. Uh, you will accept, uh, because of our secrecy clause, I may not be able to divulge what is happening to that particular case. Correct. But your concerns are genuine. Yeah. So, if we don't have expertise in any field, yeah. as you said, definitely we will be confronted with issues. Yeah. But even with limited resources, uh, we will tap the other experts who are available in the country mm -hmm. in various government departments there mm -hmm. are experts through them we have to learn so we never let go anything with hard way we have learned mm -hmm. so we have learned and if there's any difficulty in learning we learn from others yeah. so i'm not referring to this particular case no. but generally that is how we do mm -hmm. now this brings us to a very valid point mm -hmm. now if you look at every paper yeah. every media report even in parliament Everyone is asking, uh, when are you going to arrest so and so? Yeah. Especially people who are connected to politics, yeah. they want your political opponent be arrested and prosecuted. Yeah. Probably they might get a political advantage mm. by doing campaigning. Mm. Now this, the discussion so far we have now pushes us towards yeah. to have a systemic change. Yeah. We have no one talks how the bribery commission should be strengthened. How they, no one for the last 24 years, no one has asked the question like today, yeah. why 
no accountants, no engineers are recruited. So therefore, this is time has come mm. to uh, people who raise voice asking, when are you going to arrest big fish? Mm. Oh, you must be interested in strengthening this organization, organization as well. On, along on those lines, uh, uh, DG, can I ask you this? Uh, even bigger than the bond scam, which uh, the Attorney General's Department described in the Commission, at the Commission, as the largest fraud ever to be have inflicted on the people of Sri Lanka since independence. Words to that effect, Zofik, don't get me wrong. Words to that effect. There is a bigger scam waiting to happen, and it's happening as we speak, and I don't see any, any form of overt action. And that is in the national procurement process. And the Central Expressway, uh, Section 3, comes into play. Uh, in the previous government, everybody talked about the very high cost of the Southern Expressway. Well, this is over two and a half times that already high cost. Now, then, we have politicians who are breaking the rules as we speak. They've, they've deviated from uh, procurement policy and guidelines. The cabinet has approved, has got standing cabinet approved, uh, negotiating committees, technical committees, all sorts of committees. None of this has deterred various ministers from going and having meetings with bidders, with people who won bids. These, these, these are not the roles of the ministers. It is not even the role of a ministry secretary to do solo. There, there is a system in place, and this system is being completely broken down. And yet, we don't, we don't have a proactive uh, involvement from the Commission. Why is that? Okay. Uh, you know, we are always, what, what we have been doing up to now, after a particular incident happened, we try to collect and gather evidence with a view to prosecute for the offence of corruption. We know only that offence, corruption. But I hmm, will give you one example from Hong Kong. Anti-corruption anti -corruption ranking, they are number 13. You know, there are a special region in China. They don't have prime ministers or president. Yes. Chief, one, the person in charge is the chief executive. Yeah. Several years back, hmm, he was in a procurement committee. And uh, he decided, he along with others, decided a particular procurement be given to a particular company, a particular yeah. firm. Yeah. When you look at the documents, perfect. You can't find any yeah. uh, incident of corruption. But later it revealed, several years prior to this procurement, several years prior to this procurement, this chief executive, he had a, an apartment. Mm -hmm. The interior design was done by the same firm, oh. which years later uh, bid for this uh, the procurement. Mm -hmm. And when he sat for the procurement committee, he, he has not divulged. Right. And ultimately, he was prosecuted not for the offense of corruption, yeah. for not divulging. And this is called conflict of interest. In our country, no one knows of conflict of interest, you see. So that is why, what is conflict of interest? If, uh, if I am a public servant, if I am engaged in a, per, in a particular public duty today, yeah. I have to declare, yeah. I have to declare I don't have a, a pecuniary or personal or any kind of connection, yeah. interest with the party. I have to diverge. Then not only that, that is the real conflict of interest. Then there can be a potential conflict of interest. I don't have a conflict today, but I know one of my relatives is going to get married to this particular firm tomorrow. Yeah. So then if there's a potential, I have to diverge. That is second. Thirdly, uh, I don't have any connection today or tomorrow, but due to some reasons, people have the perception, I have some connection. If I know that people have some connection, I have to diverge. Mm. Then there are what will happen. There is a senior management committee or the head of the department. Yeah. He has to take a decision whether this particular assignment I should continue or not. So if, if so, under what condition it so we have to do. Yeah. So then he they will take a decision. Otherwise, always we can get rid of the work. No? As a member of the public, if I want to t get you as your, your commission to look into the procurement process, of the Central Expressway, which I am now telling you, is good, is a larger scam than the bond scam. And I want you to look at it now before it's too late. 
or I also want you to somebody's coming to the Sri Lankan Airlines Commission of inquiry in, in the Presidential Commission there they come they say what they want to and then they're gone it's the same thing that happened with Arjuna Mahendra and the previous commission. They come there, they follow the proceedings very carefully. Mm -hmm. And before it's that, uh, or they, they come and give their investigation, but before the reports are, they disappear. How do I, as a member of the public, stop these people from leaving the country until these investigations are complete? How do I do it as a uh, member of the public? Definitely, I will answer that question, not uh, particularly this case, no. but generally. Uh, coming back to the conflict of interest, yeah. then what will happen? If I don't divulge my conflict, yeah. it is a separate offense. It's a separate offense. So then it is easier, easy to find evidence for that. Yeah. So then once you have that provision, yeah. uh, that procedure, you don't, you, you won't see corruption. Right. So that is why we need uh, conflict of interest rules uh, as well. Yeah. So coming back to your other issues, yeah. now uh, the uh, the. Uh, as a member of the public, as how member do I stop them from leaving the country? Th that is that is questionable because uh, the the if one wa wants to uh, limit any person's uh, movement, yeah. only the courts can do that. Yeah. Uh, to a certain extent, bribery commission also can do that. Yeah. Uh, if the commission is satisfied with that, yeah. mind you, even then the commission cannot take any arbitrary decisions yeah. because our decisions can be challenged by way of a writ. Or fundamental rights jurisdiction. Now the commissions of inquiry, they've uh, they they've said, look, this this you need to investigate this aspect of this person's involvement, ex ministers, ex whoever, whatever. Um, is there a problem between the commission of inquiry act? Obviously, those uh, presidential commissions are being formed under that, uh, and they're saying, well, you should look into these things. Now, is that a problem? Is that why you are not looking at uh, it at the moment? I, I will be to give a very clear answer. Yeah. Now, I don't want to refer to any particular commission no. of inquiry. Uh, there are commission of inquiry, those are referred to as presidential commission of inquiry. Yeah. Now, during that process, evidence material is collected. Yeah. After the collection of the material, that will be referred to his excellency, the president. Right. Why? This is a mandate given by the president. No? Yeah. Those are the terms of reference. Yeah. So, once uh, His Excellency receives this report, he has the power to refer it to whoever the organization is. Mm, mm. So now he has referred, he has the power to refer to the Attorney General. Mm. He has the power to refer to the, even to the police. Yeah. He has the power to refer to the matter to the, our bribery commission. Yeah. Okay, now what can we do when we receive such material? Commi our, our, uh, when we receive material mm. collected by the Commission of Inquiry, mm. we don't have power to consider such material and prosecute. Mm. We have to commence investigation afresh. We have to regard this all the material collected by this Presidential Commission Inquiry as merely That's as an right. information, only as information. So the, we don't have a legal validity to consider all material. So therefore, we have to re-record all these statements. When we re-record, you need not say no. There will be so many contradictions, and how how long it would take. We have realized this. Then what did we do? Hmm. Last year, I was silent. No? I never came out. Yeah. What were you we doing? studied. Yeah. Or we studied all these things and made a recommendation to the president. And cabinet has given approval right. to amend the Commission of Inquiry Act. Right. And cabinet has given the direction to the legal draft. Legal draft on drafted. Attorney General has approved. Now the bill is there in Parliament. So that would enable our bribery commission to consider the material collected by the Commission of Inquiry. It is not necessary to re-record. If we wish, we can re-record. And on that material, mm. we can prosecute. Right. But so far, so far, it has not gone to the the the, the uh, uh, stage where they will take up for debate. It is still in uh, pending in Parliament. In uh, so, so that we're waiting. We are waiting. We're waiting. Yeah. And are we going in, to run out in, of in 2008, yeah. there was an amendment to the Commission of Inquiry Act, and that amendment gave the power to the Attorney General. Right. To based on the material collected by the President of the Commission of Inquiry, yeah. he has the power to prosecute. But practically, 
once he, he though he has the power to prosecute he has to examine certain things because commission of inquiry the, it is a merely collection of material they don't go into detail so therefore now i i think attorney general has referred this matter to the cid uh, to prepare the case to be sent to be taken before a court of law right so i think the attorney general has done now we are awaiting this amendment is passed well you know um uh, President's Council, Director General of the Bribery Commission. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we've, unfortunately, we've run out of time. And, uh, you know, I hope that uh, you all are not going to run out of time with mm. Parliament in the, in the passage of that thing. Um, <clears throat> I want to, uh, I, I need another minute, uh, Control Room, because I want to ask you this question. We have an, an anomalous situation, and that is this. We have the, the Prime Minister, uh, in Parliament saying that he insisted on the change of the system of rewarding bonds. We have the former governor, Arjuna Mayandran, who told Cope that he only followed the instructions of the Prime Minister. And then, and this is where my point is, which is why we challenge this uh, Commission's report, and we now have a Commission's report in which it says that the Commissioners note that the, there is no evidence to say that the Prime Minister asked Arjuna Mahendran to break any rules. But this is a bit like Koede Animal Lepol, because that's not the question. The question is this. One person says, I accept that I, I instructed, I insisted on the change, and the other person says, well, I only did what he said. And then we have this. So this, this is going nowhere. How do we avoid situations like that? That's why we say that this commissions of report, this, this particular report, has this anomaly uh, and it's know, struggling. You know, in our commission, it is the three commissioners who take a decision whether to prosecute or not. On their direction only, I can sign the indictment. Right. So the, one day, I might send out a case or I might not send out a case. Yeah. So uh, when there's a prospect of a case one yeah. day, I think in public, uh, I should not make any comment on no, this political statement. I think you will understand because yes. I am playing a quasi-judicial role. I, uh, so I, I should, uh, in my appearance also, conduct also, I must show that uh, I am... But can I ask you one, one Sri Lankan to another okay. without our official caps on? Yes. Can you tell me, is your, is your commission responsible in any shape or form to have permitted the former governor, who now remains a fugitive, uh, from leaving the country, even though there had been originally a complaint made by uh, a politician about this bribery uh, allegation. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think so, to my knowledge, right. because I came uh, about 15 months back, to my knowledge, I don't think, and I don't know, I can't say the nature of the investigation that is being conducted. Yes. I, can't say. Mm, so those are several restrictions I have. Be that as it may, I'll shall I take half a minute. Yes. Uh, can I have this, this document? Indeed. Uh, you know, we have launched a national action plan. That means in 2015, when this government came into power, everyone wanted to eradicate bribery and corruption. Mm. However, at that time, there was no action plan. Every country, every government, every house must have an action plan. Now the cabinet of ministers has given us the mandate to prepare a national action plan. Now we are going across the country. We have, been, we have gone to a number of cities last Friday, Saturday, Jaffna and Kilnochi. Likewise, we are getting ideas why we want to change our law. Commissioner, Pro on air, because we have run out of time, on air I say to you, please come with your team and come on our Face the Nation program. We will give you a whole two hours to debate this whole and to bring to the public's sure, attention sure. Uh, this whole new thing about bribery and corruption in Sri Lanka. Let's dedicate that program to your efforts. Uh, and I wish you well with your efforts. And I do wish that you didn't have those restrictions to tell me whether or not the Bribery Commission had anything to do with releasing uh, the travel order to allow that gentleman to travel abroad. But. Sir Jamana, thank you very much. Thank you very so much open. for inviting, giving me this valuable opportunity because I think people of this country uh, should know what bribery corruption and what is the present position. Your, your blessings are always welcome because this is our your, blessings our are with you. Our network is at your disposal. Yes. Thank you again. And uh, thank you, Country Room, for giving me that extra time.
Take care and God bless. Thank you very much. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Thank <laughs> you.